you got a $230 price target, I believe, on Apple. You feel, is VR, AR, is this an area that Apple's just going to dominate and make it, well, the product and the ecosystem we've all been waiting for? You know, we've actually waited almost 12 to 13 years for this. It started with the first acquisition of Mateo by Apple, which was one of the leaders in augmented reality and virtual reality. And so when you read into the Code New World's theme, they've been cryptic about the future worlds in a mixed reality world. And this is probably the start of what we're going to see that move from 2D to 3D, the move from typing to gestures and eye tracking. Um, it's gonna actually change where we go, but we're still at the very beginning, but it's a big market cap that we're looking at here. We're looking at about 451 billion by 2030 with a CAGR of 37.2 percent that are yeah. about to head there. But the real thing is, how do we take device plus content plus distribution networks to get there? And that's where Apple will have the magic sauce. Ray, Bloomberg's reporting that Apple intends to sell 900,000 units of the mixed reality headset in year one. What does that tell you about their confidence for uptake and demand at that price point? I think that's a price point that's not for the mass market, but a price point that's designed for the experts, the developers and the content creators that are dying to get their hands on something to make this metaverse world work and make that move from X reality, augmented reality to where they can get to a point where we can actually see apps for both the B2B market and the B2C market. And I think that's what they're counting on. But that number in itself, 900,000, is still a pretty big number, mm -hmm. which means that they've gotten their manufacturing capacity to be able to do that. So I'm going to be curious to see how they put this all together. Yeah, I mean, you're sat there in Taipei at the moment. Is this a supply chain question that has to depend on China at the moment? Actually, that's a supply chain question that's going to happen on multiple forces for where you actually get the glass, the lead, all the stuff here. Um, Taipei, Taiwan, as you know, is, is one of the leaders in providing supplies to Apple from a various number of companies from Foxconn downline to the L2, L3 suppliers uh, and having conversations with them over the past few weeks and uh, over the weekend. It sounds like um, the supply chains are getting ready to ramp up for a very, very different type of approach. Yeah, I really think that we're focusing in on supply chain. We're focusing in on actually, Ed, as well, when this becomes available. We're going to be talking about it, hearing a price point. Right. But when will it go on sale? Yeah, I mean, you and I had that Twitter space this Friday with Mark Gurman, right? And that was such a big question for so much of the audience. What Bloomberg's reported is that, A, this is a product that's been delayed several times. Apple would hope to unveil it much sooner. Could we see this in December, for example, and what the roadmap is for shipping? I, I find Ray's uh, answer on 900,000 being good evidence that they've got their supply chain together really interesting. My question to you, Ray, is how quickly do they need to move on to a lower price point model? in order to give this segment some momentum? Yeah, that's a great question. And I believe that's going to be something in the next 12 to 18 months, right? You've got to get the content in place. You've got to get the developers imagining what's next. And they've got to get another iteration to what their new operating system is for whatever this headset will be called. And so whatever that OS is going to be is really how we're going to help figure out what we get to in terms of the right type of content, the right mix, the right type of use cases. I believe they've got a sense of what those use cases and scenarios are, both on the enterprise side as well as on the consumer side. And that's what makes this exciting. And of course, that's what makes WWDC exciting. Ray, I reported earlier this year that the real reason Meta cut prices on Quest Pro was because the enterprise demand just wasn't there. There was no appetite to bring uh, a higher end headset into the workspace. Do you think Apple can crack that problem? We definitely think so. And I think the use cases around field service have been important. I think the use cases around training, the use cases around B2B interviews, uh, the use cases that are happening around helping people uh, on board, those are all real use cases. But at the price point that Meta was putting it at and the lack of content and the lack of developer interest, I think that was the challenge. And I think that's where Apple may crack this, uh, especially when they talk about coding new worlds. I think you're also to see the updates. When we look at Air Kit 7 and Reality Kit two, they're going to show some of those updates that actually will help you understand how they're evolving. And of course, if you think about this as the unifying force of bringing all of Apple's OSs together, this could be the first step where we see iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, watch OS maybe come together. And I think that would be the interesting development to see the software platforms all unify against this new medium.
kind of a power of the ecosystem ultimately, Ray. And I'm, I'm interested in your take of what is an elephant in the room because every other company is talking about it. Every earnings call and statement had it. Artificial intelligence. Do you think Apple's going to go there talking much? Because ultimately it's sort of already thought that the market understood its power in that area, in that arena. Well, living in Cupertino, California, I can tell you that they are definitely wrapping up on AI ML team members. They've been definitely wrapping up on AI engines, engineers, but this has been going on for the last five years. So for Apple, AI isn't like, oh, cool, shiny new object. You know, it's more like AI is embedded in almost everything we do. And by the way, here are the applications that makes your life better. And I think that's the difference between how Apple talks about AI versus this little weird battle between Microsoft and Google trying to outdo each other on the AI wars.